The story begins on a typical morning in a seaside Korean village. Fishermen take their boats out to sea, catch fish and then deliver it to shops and fish restaurants. This time, along with other fish, a young mackerel gets caught in the net. Fresh catch is brought to a coastal restaurant and transferred into an aquarium. In the evening, visitors gather here. One family eats flounder. The fish is gutted and cut into pieces, but still alive. A visitor boy examines clown fish in an aquarium and asks adults what will happen if an edible big fish is added to the aquarium. His mother feeds him flounder, ignoring the question. Meanwhile, the owner of the restaurant comes to the threshold and decides to move the mackerel into another aquarium, where there are fewer fish. New customers drive up to the restaurant and think about their order for a long time. They want to eat fresh fish. The owner of the restaurant claims that all his fish was caught this morning from the ocean. Mackerel rushes around the aquarium into which it was moved. It thinks it can swim out of the aquarium walls, so it tries to ram them. The rest of the fish in this tank pretend to be dead so they won't be served to someone for dinner. Customers enter the restaurant. A young greenling fish named Spotty happily informs the neighbors that the danger has passed. The fish begin to swim freely, but then the owner comes out and catches one of them from the aquarium. The new mackerel watches in horror as the fish is stabbed in the head, then butchered and gutted. All this time the fish remains alive. Soon the restaurant closes, customers and staff go home. The mackerel continues to rush around the aquarium and smash its head against the walls. Spotty tries to reason with it, explaining that it is impossible to break the invisible wall. But the mackerel doesn't want to hear anything. The rest of the fish look at it with contempt. In addition to Spotty, there is a sleepy Mr. Sea Bass, a snapper fish named Miss Snapper, a striped beak fish named Brim, and a conger eel named Juldum. They all think Spotty is a stupid kid and often offend him by biting his tail. But now they are switching to mackerel. Brim condescendingly states that such fish are found in all fish farms. They consider themselves special. Suddenly Juldum calls everyone to line up, and the fish obey him. From under the lattice at the bottom of the aquarium, the old flounder emerges. The rest of the fish treat him with great respect and even call him the master. Juldum reports to the master that the mackerel has arrived this morning and is not yet familiar with the new orders. The master takes off and hits the mackerel hard, trying to reason with her. Before losing consciousness, the mackerel hears the master's words, play dead when people look at you. In the mackerel's dream, she sees that she is again floating freely in the sea and enjoying life. She hopes that entering the aquarium was a nightmarish vision that will be forgotten in the morning. People seem to her to be terrible monsters who imprison fish in cages with invisible walls, and then brutally mock them. Mackerel cannot believe that her friends and brethren can be so cruelly killed. She hopes to wake up in the ocean with her friends and recover from her nightmare as soon as possible. In the morning, the mackerel comes to her senses and again faces the terrifying reality. Soon, a restaurant worker throws a half-dead fish into the aquarium. Mackerel neighbors look at the new fish with appetite and prepare for a delicious lunch. The fish begs not to be eaten, but Juldum pushes the fish to the net, under which the master hides during the day. With a sharp movement, the master drags the fish into his lair and, after a few moments, pushes it back with gouged eyes. All but the mackerel immediately pounce on the dead fish and torment its body with gusto. The shocked mackerel does not touch the meat, she thinks about her own. Since the fish was thrown into the aquarium from above, then the lid is now open, and she can jump out of the aquarium. Mackerel does just that. She flops to the ground and floundering tries to get to the water. The neighbors forget about the meal and look with surprise at the mackerel. But the sea is too far. The mackerel faints without water and stops halfway. At that moment, a worker comes out of the restaurant, picks up a mackerel and launches it back into the aquarium. The rest of the fish swim up to the unconscious mackerel and wonder about the reasons for her act. They sincerely do not understand why she needs to leave the aquarium. The fish give the mackerel the name Padak Padak which means slap slap, slapping the fish with its tail on the ground. Every night, Master Old Flounder asks the rest of the fish a riddle about life in the ocean. The fact is that the master lies, as if he comes from the ocean. In fact, it was raised on a fish farm, like all other fish, except for the padak mackerel. The one who solves the riddle has the right to bite off a piece of the loser's tail. As a rule, the loser is always spotty. The fish love this game. Tonight the master asks how many limbs a starfish has. Padak has seen starfish more than once, so she confidently replies that they have five limbs. Brim suggests that the starfish has 50 limbs, and Spotty gives the number 51. The master says that the correct answer is 50. Padak is very indignant. She asks if anyone has seen a starfish in real life. Everyone claims to have seen it. Padak doesn't understand why people ask riddles to which no one knows the right answer. According to the master, it turns out that Padak lost. All the fish together pounce on her press down, and Brim tries to bite off a piece of her tail. However, Padak manages to escape. The next day, an angry Brim can't seem to leave Padak alone. Then Spotty intercedes for her. A friendship develops between Padak and Spotty. Spotty asks why Padak jumped out of the aquarium yesterday. She explains that she wanted to return home to the sea. 
Spotty can't believe his girlfriend used to live at sea. Padak teaches Spotty to listen carefully and distinguish the sound of the sea among other sounds. The master overhears their conversation. He remembers how he used to live in this aquarium with his beloved. She was from the ocean and also taught the master to listen to the sounds of the sea. It was difficult for him, because he grew up on a fish farm. It was his lover who taught him to pretend to be dead so that people would not want to eat him. Once the cook nevertheless caught her and killed her. This remains the most terrible memory of the old flounder. Padak reveals to Spotty that she speaks the languages of many sea creatures. In particular, she can communicate freely with king crabs. Padak talks about her travels in the ocean and about the places where she would like to go. Spotty gets excited about these stories. But the master convinced the fish that they would not survive a day in the ocean, because they would be eaten by predators. Padak is surprised by such intimidation. The authority of the master begins to fall in the eyes of the rest of the fish. At night, the old flounder swims out of its hiding place and angrily attacks Padak. They get into a fight, and the master, forgetting himself, shouts out that he grew up on a fish farm. After the battle, he bleeds and hides in his lair. Because the fish are accustomed to being given riddles every night, they now demand a riddle from Padak, as the only marine inhabitant. Jewelton, with arrogance and mockery, makes Padak come up with a riddle to distract the rest of the fish from thoughts of imminent death. Padak asks this question, how do they all get out of the aquarium? Encouraged, Spotty answers first. He heard that every being has a soul, and it is free by nature. Spotty believes that if they become souls, they can break out of the aquarium. Brim says with a grin that they will first have to die to do so. But the master tells the fish that they've been dead since they got into this tank, so Spotty sees no contradiction here. Brim is next to answer, he thinks they should try to break the invisible wall. But the rest of the fish think that they will die if they hit the glass all night. Miss Snapper thinks they should wait for heavy rain. Then, in her opinion, the water level in the sea will rise and wash away the aquarium. And Mr. Sea Bass suggests asking the king crabs to break the glass with their claws. Fortunately, crabs live right under their aquarium. Padak promises to jump into the aquarium with crabs tomorrow and negotiate everything with them. Nobody but Spotty believes in the success of this idea. Padak wonders why the fish do not believe in anything. Do not try to get out and bow before the old flounder. Padak debunks the greatness of the master and invites the fish to think with their own heads but they angrily attack Padak, because they are not ready to change their thinking so much. Brim tries to beat Padak to death, but then the old flounder swims out of the shelter and sternly urges everyone to calm down. The master repeats the idea that the fish in the aquarium are already dead, and the dead cannot rise and dream of freedom. Everyone agrees with him except Padak. The next morning, restaurant workers move the fish into a bowl and wash their tank. Padak asks why old flounder was not transplanted into the basin along with everyone else. Spotty explains that people have forgotten about the existence of the master, because he hides in his hideout all the time. Now he is sitting there too. Suddenly, Padak realizes that now is the best time to escape, because the fish are no longer surrounded by invisible walls. She jumps out of the basin and flounders towards the sea. Spotty follows suit. A car pulls up to the restaurant, visitors get out of it. The employees explain that the restaurant is currently closed. The hungry visitor stomps on the spot and presses down the tail of the floundering Spotty with his heel. It draws the restaurant owner's attention to the fact that two of his fish are trying to get away. Padak manages to make it to the edge of the pier, but Spotty can't keep up with her due to a visitor. Padak ends up staying with a friend and they are returned to the aquarium. In the evening, the restaurant gathers a lot of visitors. A curious boy notices nets for catching fish. Mom calls him to dinner, and the boy leaves. Meanwhile, a restaurant worker releases a half-dead fish into the aquarium where Padak lives. Spotty invites Padak to eat with him, but the proud mackerel refuses to eat after old flounder. The master takes the half-dead fish to his lair and communicates with it. The fish says that it will die soon, because its gills are damaged. The sick fish laughs at the master, considering him the same dead man, because eternal existence in a secret lair cannot be called a free life. The master finishes off the offender, but does not eat him but everyone else starts to eat. Padak finds it unpleasant to look at. Casting an evil glance at the master, she emerges from the aquarium and jumps into the aquarium with the crabs, as she promised. Here, Padak is trying to negotiate with the crabs so that they break the walls of the aquarium, but the crabs do not answer and only hurt Padak. At this time, a curious boy approaches the aquariums again. He fishes Padak out of the crab tank and takes her to the clownfish tank. Soon, the wounded Padak comes to her senses and eats the clownfish with an appetite. In another aquarium, everyone already thinks Padak is dead, but Spotty wants to see her through. To do this, he is going to talk to the crabs himself. The master hits Spotty with his tail and calls him a fool. The master then orders the fish to forget everything Padak told them. But Spotty doesn't want to listen to anyone. He jumps out of the aquarium and goes to the crabs. Meanwhile, Padak continues to wallow in the small aquarium, wanting to get to the last clownfish. Because of this, a sword breaks off from the statuette of a knight, which stands in the aquarium as an ornament, and sticks into the body of Padak. Spotty tries to talk to the crabs, but they are extremely aggressive. Due to the injury, 
Padak loses consciousness. She imagines a conversation with Spotty. Spotty asks if he can go to see if he has never lived there before. Padak says that all fish actually come from the sea, they just forgot about it. Padak thinks she and Spotty can escape and live together at sea. In reality, Spotty's bleeding, unconscious body is returned to the original aquarium. Juldum smirks and believes he has the right to eat Spotty now. But the master doesn't like it at all. He takes Spotty's body from Juldum and prepares to defend it. Juldum does not understand this act. He demands that the master give him Spotty's body, but the old flounder is adamant. People finally notice that Padak is not in her tank and return her to her place. Padak sees an injured, motionless Spotty and mistakenly believes that the master killed him. Padak starts chasing old flounder, they quickly rush around the aquarium. At this time, a restaurant worker approaches them. He just received an order for the preparation of flounder, so he catches the master. The worker places the old flounder next to the cutting board. The master sees how other fish are butchered and cooked, how minced fish is made and how people champ while eating his brothers. All this terribly frightens the master. Suddenly he sees Spotty's body being thrown into the sink. The master recalls the moment when Spotty's tail was bitten for the first time after failing to solve the riddle. Spotty was crying and the master wanted to cheer him up. Then Spotty asked why he had to be so desperate to survive. The master had no answer, because there really is no point in living in an aquarium. The master realizes this the moment the chef raises the knife over his head. Suddenly, the diners decide to change their order, now they want to taste the mackerel. The cook releases old flounder back into the aquarium. Fish are incredibly surprised. The master swims up to Padak. She apologizes for misinterpreting master's actions earlier. Padak now realizes that the master cared about his friends, not trying to suppress them. Padak and Kambala feel the unity of souls. They no longer see fears and barriers to true friendship. After that, the cook fishes out Padak. Finally, the mackerel promises that she will forever remember her friend and will remain in his heart. The padak is cut up and served on the table. The visitor who ordered it decides to mock the still living fish by inserting a cigarette into its mouth. The master notices nothing but his dying friend. He no longer wants to play dead. The next morning, a restaurant worker removes the lids from the aquariums. The old flounder immediately breaks out of its shelter and jumps out of the aquarium. He knocks the man down, falls to the ground and rushes towards the sea. Halfway through, the master feels that his strength is leaving him. It is almost impossible to move. Then he hears Padak's encouraging voice. The voice asks him to move on, assuring him that there is not much left. The flounder gets to the very edge of the pier, but then a restaurant worker catches up with him. He steps on the master's tail and gives him flicks. Then he picks up the master and examines him, about to take him to the aquarium. Suddenly, the master spits out a fragment of the sword, which yesterday dug into the body of Padak. The sharp sword hits a restaurant worker in the face. From pain and surprise, he discards the fish. Thus the master enters the sea. The master's friends are watching with their mouths open. Then the usual life continues in the restaurant and aquariums. But the master is now free.